visual effects is a demanding industry. It demands as much as the most advanced technology can offer. I was building my workstations for years. Stacked GPUs, top tier CPUs, fastest SSDs, RAIDs, custom water cooling loops for stability and so on. I always wanted to be mobile. Never wanted to be tied up to my workstations. Things impossible just a couple of years ago are possible now. You know I'm not reviewing equipment too often and this channel is not about that, but when I do, it means it's something particularly cool. Today I'm going to talk about this 15-inch razor blade advanced model with RTX 2018 inside. Quick story first. Over the Christmas and New Year I was working on a very big project. It was extremely demanding one in terms of resources. I needed to constantly render different parts of my project on all my machines in order to deliver it on time. So I decided that I will just stay home and control all other machines from one place using my razor Blade Pro. It's important to mention all that because A. Uh, this review is from a very demanding professional's point of view and B. This is how I got that idea of fully switching to laptop which was never possible before. After the project was done I kept thinking how cool it was working from laptop, have all your machines at a glance and have all your master files with you wherever you go. So I reached out to Razer and said, hey guys, listen, I'm a VFX artist and uh, I own Blade Pro and I want to make an experiment of fully switching to a laptop. I want to remove all my big machines from the studio and work from a laptop exclusively. Do you have anything smaller than Blade Pro that would meet my needs and that I would be able to carry with me on a daily basis? Because you know, Blade Pro is a massive laptop and it's not the item that you would want to carry around every day. It was a week before CES 2019 and Razer asked me to wait. At CES 2019 they announced 15 inch blades with RTX technology inside. Later Razer kindly sent me a pre-production model right from CES. Since then all my big machines are moved away from the studio in the server room and I use this laptop as my daily driver. So far I created several complex projects on it. I've stressed tested it really hard. I almost intentionally wanted to break it to stress it to the max. First of all let's have a look at what this laptop replaced. This was my uh, main workstation for several years. Extremely reliable and powerful for any VFX and video production tasks. If you would like to know more I linked a dedicated video in the corner. So in order to replace that kind of tool, laptop has to meet certain criteria. I'm still using my big workstation as a master in the render farm, so all the softwares I use here are duplicated on that master machine. When I finished my work on the project, actually creating the project on the laptop, it's automatically synced with master render machine over OneDrive and I can render my final visuals there while I can keep working on other stuff on this laptop. What I mean by main machine? So the main machine is the machine where you create scenes. It's 99% of production pipeline, modeling, rigging, animating, texturing, lighting, compositing, simulations, caching, all that fun. But I don't need my main machine for final renders, which in my case may run for weeks on my render from. With this video, I'm not trying to say that this laptop is capable of replacing 20 GPUs. With this video, I'm trying to say that you can get the heart of all your projects. The tool that is powerful enough and reliable to carry all your production tasks and can be with you wherever you go. This is the key for me. Be mobile and have all my work with me. Be able to fire up production on the meetings, presentations and so on. You know, not just PowerPoint presentations, but actually open a 3D software, start live previews, start working on textures, materials with the client. 
with live feedback and without any technical problems. Also, I was very surprised when I was able to run Houdini simulation, C4D rendering and DaVinci Resolve live playback on a 4K external screen simultaneously. And the laptop didn't even blink. This fact on its own tells a lot for those who know what I'm talking about. Anyways, I've run several benchmarks on my old workstation and on this laptop in order to compare the productivity. Let's start with Cinebench, as uh, these stats are what will influence your workflow directly. Viewport performance, scenes heavy load, simulations, catching and all that stuff. It's still on the second place in Cinebench, which means I can load Cinema 4D quite significantly. OpenGL performance is taking first place and is calculated from one most powerful GPU in the system, which is GTX 1080 Ti in this case. Still a very decent GPU. On the Razer Blade you have different performance modes that helps you to save battery when you don't need all the power. So I tested balanced mode and creator mode. As you can see the difference in CPU performance is quite significant with top performance taking third place in the benchmark, slightly lower result than my big workstation. OpenGL performance is significantly better than my big workstations, meaning some of the features in the software such as Fusion, After Effects and Cinema 4D will run much better, thanks to RTX. Talking about RTX, you probably heard that it's quite a big deal in the world of graphic cards. The technology is very new and not yet fully optimized in almost all the softwares, meaning it will get even more powerful in the future. Powerful GPU is quite important for me. Autoy, the creators of Octane Render Engine, released a version of their benchmark that shows how powerful your graphic card will be in the future release of their engine, once RTX is fully implemented. As you can see, I can expect almost three times more performance in future release of Octane. Both balanced and creator modes excites me quite a lot because one card in this laptop will perform as almost three GTX 1080 Ti's in my big workstation. This is quite insane. I made regular Octane Bench tests as well and again we can see that mode choice influence performance a little bit. To summarize, everything I ever needed my big workstation for can now be done on this little laptop without any problems on the same level everywhere I go. What is more exciting is that the laptop is upgradable. By default it's uh, shipped with 512 gigs of SSD and 16 gigs of RAM. I've upgraded mine to 2 terabytes SSD and 32 gigs of RAM. SSD deserves a special mention as it's M.2 drive. M.2 SSDs are significantly faster than traditional ones as these utilize PCIe port. So 2 terabytes of ultra fast space is very much appreciated when working with video content. Couple of words about the screen. The version I have is a full HD version with 144 GHz refresh rate. I'm not a gamer so I don't care about refresh rates as much. What I do care about though are colors. If you've seen my Razer Blade Pro review from last year, you know how frustrated I was about colors on it. This is not the case with this laptop. It comes with accurate colors straight out of the box covering 100% of SRG RGB and Adobe RGB. The screen itself is matte, so you won't have any weird reflections or flares. Bluetooth connectivity is outstanding. I have so many devices and peripherals I'm connecting and disconnecting all the time and I had no problems whatsoever moving from my home space to the studio and back. The laptop remembers all the devices and connects to them automatically when they are in the range and are turned on. This includes keyboards, mouse, Apple AirPods, external speaker and vacuum tablet. The keyboard is very pleasing. Again, comparing to my Razer Blade Pro that had some problems, this one does not have any problems at all. And the keyboard itself is much better in my opinion. I'm not a big fan of mechanical clicky buttons, uh, this one is very quiet. 
Of course, the keyboard is equipped with Razer's famous RGB illumination. I've set all my Razer stuff to just white color, but you can go crazy if that's something you desire as every single key is customizable. Touchpad is big and very responsive to Windows gesture controls. The ports. Uh, all the standard stuff is there. Charging port, two USB 3.1 ports and headphone jack on the left side. Mini display, HDMI, another USB 3.1 and Thunderbolt port on the right side. I would love to have Ethernet port and SD card reader though. It's not a massive flaw but brings certain inconvenience for sure. In the studio I have a small dongle for Ethernet cable and at home space Ethernet is connected to the Razer Core which also hosts my external 1080 Ti and feeds my external monitor. So with the Core all I have to do is plug the Thunderbolt cable to have external screen plus wired internet. I can live with that because I need external card reader for my FS7 anyway because it utilizes XQD cards. The speakers are really decent and what I like the most is that they sound good when the laptop is closed. I use the laptop closed on a vertical stand when connected to external screen so this was a very pleasant surprise. Finally, what made it all possible without glitches in such a small form factor is of course clever cooling. I'm not going to pretend I understand the engineering, but the whole surface of the laptop doesn't even get hot while under load. The hot air is efficiently blown out from back vents and my decision to use laptop on a vertical stand helps a lot. The laptop has a free access to air and plenty of space to blow it out. RTX 2080 inside is Max-Q version, uh, which tells you that it's a special version that helps with cooling. As for the regular use cases, Razer equipped the laptop with bigger rubber pads to ensure free air access on almost any surfaces. The positioning of air intakes vents, in my opinion, is not the best one, but it's the same across all Razer laptops. If you want to use the laptop on your knees and would sit comfortably, you will fully block the intake. To justify such a decision though, it's a gaming laptop and I doubt you would play games or work with a laptop on your knees. It's just uncomfortable. And if you're just browsing internet on a sofa, it doesn't get hot. The battery is enough for whatever I may need battery for. Meetings, presentations, quick uh, work on a plane or a train. I really don't know what battery life should be on a laptop like that, but I believe Razer did their best to provide us with the longest battery life on a laptop of such caliber. Overall, I think this laptop is perfect for anyone who's on the move. Freelancers working here and there, maybe students who are looking to invest a significant amount of money into machine that will serve them for years to come. If you're thinking about solid base for you to start any media production, this is the laptop to choose hands down. Solid and reliable solution for VFX artists and motion designers. Razer are improving their products more and more. They are learning on their mistakes unlike some other companies. Won't say any names. Peace.